My biggest fear in life is to get a bad grade at the end of my life when I'm on my deathbed because I think most people are a little bit too binary when they view their life. Like you'll hear people say, I lived a good life versus living a bad life as if there's only two options. It's like, that's not really how it works. The way that, well, the way that I think it works is think of it like on a scale of one to a hundred. A hundred being you lived a perfect life. You did everything right. And a one is you did everything wrong. I think we all are going to get a score out of a hundred at the end of life. And when it comes to like, you should live the life that you want to live. Only you know what you want to do. Like, I'm not one of these people who says you, sh you should want to do this. It's like, if you want to live in the mountains in an igloo, go for it. And if you aren't pursuing the thing that you know that you want to pursue, you are currently losing to yourself. Does that make sense? Like again, never ever conform to what society wants for you or what someone else says that you should want to do. But you need to listen with like intensely to your inner self telling you what you should do. Because there is a point in life when you get older where you can't fix these things. If, if you always want to hike Mount Machu Picchu and you get so old that your knee is screwed up and you can barely walk and you need to be in a wheelchair, you can't hike up Mount Machu Picchu. It doesn't matter how much you manifest it. It doesn't matter how positive you are. There comes a time where you're slapped in the face with reality. And I'm not trying to like scare you here at all. In fact, this is actually a very empowering way to think, right? Because I'm empowering you to listen to yourself, to listen to what you actually want in life, then go get that thing, right? Um, but the one thing I will say, and no one really thinks about this, and no one thinks about this because they think in, in such short-term time horizons. Like you're thinking about where do I want to go to the, like what bar do I want to go to on the weekend, right? But if you're watching this and you want to be the young person with money, and let's say young is like, I don't know, 25 years old, right? If you want to be the young person with money, there is a window of time that you have to make that happen. Because if you start making money when you're 40, for example, it, that's awesome. But you're not the young guy with money anymore. You're the middle-aged guy with money. Not that that's bad, but if you want to have the life experience of being the young person with money, then you have a very short window depending on your age. Maybe you're, you're, maybe you're already past that based on 25 being like young. And by the way, I didn't start making money until I was like 27 years old. Right, but I am very grateful that I can be the fairly young guy, and I'm st as of recording this video, I'm 29 years old. But yeah, it's like I'm living in a in a big old penthouse, traveling around the world with money. It's awesome. Like I'm sure when I'm 90 years old, I'll be like, I'm really happy that like I got to have that life experience because I know that's what I wanted for myself. Okay, so to circle back to the title of this video, my biggest fear, I don't want to get a low score at the end of my life. I wanna reflect back on everything and think to myself, you know what, like, I mean, I think shooting, like, I think perfect should be kind of like an unattainable goal. Like, I think perfect is very difficult to, hey, maybe you, you can live a perfect life, it's not, that's not gonna be me. But I still wanna get like, at least 92 out of 100, at least. Cause it's like, okay, wasn't perfect, but like I still did pretty much everything that I wanted to do. Because I've actually been to an old folks home and I've spoken to the people there. And you know, I've asked them, hey, like, well, like, tell me about your life. And you can see regret in some people's eyes because they're at a point where they can't change anything. You know, you know, maybe some of them wanted to know what it was like to date really attractive people. But I mean, dude, when you're like 80 years old, it's not really the same thing. You know, like there's certain things that make more sense to do in certain phases of your life. So I think when it comes to my later years in life, I think that's when I'm going to pursue spirituality a little bit more. And I still hire, I still have a spiritual coach that I pay money to every single month. But I think in my younger years, it's more about, you know, let, let's be a little bit more flashy. Let's make some money. Let's have some crazy parties and let's have some fun. And then maybe when I'm like, I don't know, 45 or 50 years old, I'll start to lean back a little bit. I'll start to go within. I'm constantly auditing my life. And I kind of always imagine talking to my 90 year old self. And I would ask him, what do you think about what I'm doing right now? And if he says, good, yeah, no, this is great. 
awesome. But if he disapproves, then that's not good, right? So have that exercise. Imagine sitting across the table from your 90-year-old self and speaking to that person and see if they would approve or disapprove with what you're doing and the decisions that you're making right now. I think this video here might be the most underwhelming face reveal video ever, but whatever. I figured the first video where I'm on camera, like why not make it really real and raw where I just talk about my biggest fear in life? Like let's go in with a bang, all right? You guys, I love you. If you like this video, leave it a like because i that's how you let me know if you liked it. Or if you're new, feel free to follow the channel. And you know, if you like this video, you're gonna like future videos. So just subscribe, all right? You guys, I love you. And I'll talk to you later. Peace.